What is going on world? What's up everyone? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new StarCraft 2 video. This one is between two players on the WCS Pro Circuit. Spawning here in the bottom left hand corner of 16-bit LE playing with the blue Protoss pieces. He's currently in the Grand Finals of the WCS in Austin. His name is Mana. And his opponent, spawning the cross position, we have, with the red Zerg pieces, the current best player on the planet. His name is Serral. So, guys and girls, I am extremely excited about this series and this matchup in particular because this series was played at the WCS in Austin and was the grand finals of that tournament. So, it's all on the line. A best of seven series, game number one. Who is going to get started on the right foot in this matchup? In a PvZ matchup, which is a very fun matchup for me to watch. I absolutely love this matchup. I'm excited to see what ends up happening and what both our players decide to do here in game number one. Mana. A very strong Protoss player and his opponent, of course, Serral being the best player currently out there in the world. So if you're a mana, what do you do in this current situation? Well, it does look like he's going to go into that gateway and he decides to get that uh, natural nexus to start the game. He's going to follow this up with the cybernetics core. On the opposite side of the map, Serral is going to go for that hatch gas pool opener, which is generally what he does pretty much every single game extremely standard but Serral a lot of times will play very standard but then randomly he will have one game or one matchup that he will completely go off from what his normal build order is and throw his opponents a lot of times off so that being said we'll have to see as this game goes on what does Serral decide to do here in the early stages of this game we are going to see the warp gate research coming in and then that's going to be a stalker coming out of the gateway so that being said one thing that Sarah loves to do is get a lot of scouting information he loves to see exactly what is going on on the opposite side of the map and, and just it's always about information for him knowing exactly what's happening if they're you know the timings of expansions or of different tech structures that are very important to, to the build orders. But that said, we are going to see on the opposite side of the map, Nematized Carapace is going to be researched very early for Serral. He's going to skip out on the Zergling speed upgrade, and he's going to be going for that Nematized Carapace, and then he's going to be getting that third expansion here um, in uh, the in-base expansion for himself and and so that said it looks like you know we got a, a a macro focus game kind of starting to kind of brew up so far we are seeing a uh, nematized carapace is going to be finished up in a couple of seconds we're also going to see the star uh the stargate has finished up and now we are going to see oracles or at least one oracle on the production tab so far this is going to be followed up of course with a robotics facility out of mana so we're now starting to see the text of choice by by both players we're not necessarily seeing exactly what Cyril's planning on doing it does look like he's going to get that roach worn down and he's also going to start that zergling speed upgrade so oracle's on the way i wonder if this was it looks like it was canceled or the um the roach worn was canceled and he's going to go into the lair uh, to get those higher tier Larians. So very interesting decision making by Serral so far. So that said, he's going to start moving the creep out. Creep will be started. Lair is being morphed in. So very interesting decision making so far by Serral. He's going to go ahead and get those spore crawlers in all of his bases. And then we're going to see the Templar archives being researched. We're also going to go ahead and see that uh, the war prism is going to be coming out of um, out of the robotics facility followed up with three more gateways so i think mana is planning on getting a little bit aggressive and that's why possibly Cyril saw something that he thought was a little bit off did not like uh, possibly the build that was coming in or saw something that was a little bit off 
Cyril does confirm that that third nexus is going down at this point. And now we are gonna we're gonna start seeing what looks to be a warping of, of some of these High Templar now gonna be morphed into Archons. So very interesting. Charge is being researched right now, and we do have the War Prism is moving out. Now, Cyril did see this, so he is gonna probably have to, you know, he's gonna have to have his def defense on point here, but he is gonna have enough queens that are gonna be able to to shoo this uh, this the little bit of some aggression away, at least for now. Does look like those Archons are gonna try to do a little bit of some damage, not too much to say the least. Looks like they are gonna try to go ahead and get one, possibly two of these overlords. But all that said and done, not too much damage dealt as of yet. The longer this game goes, though, I'm going to light the position man is in because he's getting that third nexus just finishing up now. And he's starting to try to clear out a little bit of some of this creep. We do have Hydralis coming out now, as well as uh, those Zerglings. That Zergling speed uh, uh, upgrades are finished. We are going to see charge is being researched, plus those plus one upgrades for ground-based units for the Protoss. Now, here we go. does look like both players are kind of... Toying back and forth, trying to get a little bit of some damage dealt. Beautiful pickup micro there on those Archons, trying to do a little bit of some damage. But all that said and done, nothing uh, too crazy as of yet. We are going to see charge being finished up in less than five seconds. Observer is here for mana to see exactly if there's any kind of timings on any of these tech structures. Banely Nest is going to be coming in as well. But all of that said and done, you know, we're approaching seven minutes. We are seeing that fourth base now coming in for Cyril. Slowly but surely, Cyril just can really almost claw his way back into games. And obviously, he's not out of this game by any stretch of the imagination. But as far as macroing up a bigger and bigger force. Muscular Augments finishes up just now for those Hydralisks. And now that fourth hatchery is now finishing up. We are going to see Storm being researched. We're also going to see another robotics facility being constructed as well as a, another forge. So we're probably going to see those, you know, those plus one, plus one upgrades. And then we're going to start seeing those plus two upgrades coming in as well. Observer is kind of seeing in a nice position, seeing ex as essentially everything that's going on. Probably going to see the exact timing when this hive is going to get started. The hive is being started right now. So that said, both players kind of giving each other a lot of respect though at this point. And I think with that hive, Mana decides to go ahead and get that fourth Nexus out. So the unit composition seems to be sentries, some zealots, as well as those high Templars, a couple of Archons, and then even an immortal. So an interesting, um, you know, a very kind of a, a powerful unit composition when used properly. And I'm sure mana, of course, is going to find a lot of value, to say the least, out of this. Now, beautiful surround here on these Zealots. Nice play there by Cyril. Getting uh, the kill on some of these, uh, on these ground-based units, as in Zealots. But that said, you don't want to really challenge possibly at least at this point if you are mana you probably just want to wait a little while centrifugal hooks is finishing up now which is of course the roly poly upgrade for the banelings for Cyril. you want to kind of buy yourself a little bit of some time once this fourth nexus goes down it's going to significantly help now we are seeing a spire coming in for Cyril, so very interesting play by Cyril. i wonder if he's going to try to go ahead and if we're going to see um, what we might see, are we going to just see the greater spire come in or what might we see out of Cyril? Of course, we, um, of course, he's continuing getting his plus two upgrades currently. We're going to see Blink being researched and we are going to see now both sides are starting to kind of try to get a feel for one another. I got to say, Cyril's got a pretty scary army compared to what mana has to offer. There is a scary army by Cyril that's about to be maxed out and this is going to get interesting because it's all going to come down to these storms and these baneling hits and if he's able to actually hit when he needs to beautiful storm so far but here we go it looks like Cyril wants to take this fight he feels pretty confident it looks like but these storms have been really on point at this 
at this point in time, which is nearing that 10 minute mark. Here we go. We are going to see the force fields coming out, but not a whole lot of damage being dealt. And, and all of a sudden, we are seeing mana. He's trying to kind of almost, you know, he took some really nice chunks out of Cyril's army. So beautiful play there. We are going to see the Greater Spire coming in, though, for Cyril. And then we're going to see, of course, the Corruptors coming in. I'm surprised, you know, I was thinking maybe we would see Mutalisks and maybe a Mutalisk switch, but that is not the case. Looks like we're going to be seeing Broodlords here shortly. But that said... This army of mana is starting to get a little bit scary, too. Now, it doesn't look like he has really... Okay, so he still has a couple of, of these High Templar, but a lot of Archons, and here we go. We are going to see some of these Banelings are going to be caught on the upside of the map. So it looks like a couple of these units are going to be surrounding those Banelings. But that said, here we go. It looks like there's going to be a little bit of a counterattack by Cyril. I don't know. This is kind of an interesting and awkward position. He's trying to hit at multiple angles at once. I like the idea, but I don't know if it's going to work because we do see a lot of Mana's army is moving across the map. And oh my god, it looks like he accidentally might have uh, kind of closed himself in a little bit. That is Cyril. And here we go. This fourth base location is starting to get under some extreme fire. The same can be said on the opposite side, which is at over at the th uh, fifth base location. Oh my god. Beautiful play here by Mana. He's getting a lot of value out of these units, but you gotta be careful. Do not want the overextension. Here come the Broodlords. They're starting to move in, and the surround is coming in by Cyril, but Mana still has a decent sized army. He is trying to target fire down this base, which is the fourth base. Is he gonna get it? It looks like he is. Possibly. Yes, he does. Just barely gets that base and that's going to be a big pickup there for mana the thing though is is that he lost almost his entire army now there's a lot of reinforcements coming in now for for uh mana but oh he just lost a bunch of a few of those high templar and you do not want to lose high templar that is for sure so these zerglings are going to come in and going to try to do a little bit of some damage see kind of what is being reinforced but wow, what an intense first game here as we uh, approach that 12 and a half minute mark. Who's really got the advantage? It kind of feels that mana is a little bit ahead. We see a lot of these upgrades that are coming in uh, for Cyril. He's been a little bit behind as far as the upgrade count is concerned. I've noticed that throughout this game. But that said, he's certainly not out of this thing just yet. So we're going to see another base coming in now, uh, which is the fifth base for mana. And this is uh, this is where it can get extremely scary for a Zerg player, because what will end up happening is the Protoss, if you don't deal with it soon, this army is going to just get so overpowering. Now Pathogen Glands is going to be finishing up in less than 10 seconds for Cyril, and so what I'm assuming is we're going to start seeing a lot of investors coming out. It looks like there were about five on that production tab. So they're going to probably start moving in. We're also seeing Burrow being a research for Cyril as well. So very interesting. Now, Mana is setting up some stasis wards, which is probably a very good decision on his part. We're going to see some spore crawlers coming in. So I, the spore crawlers, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why Cyril's deciding to put some spore crawlers down, unless he's thinking that there might very well be... Uh, some air-based units, but that being said, they are trying to snipe a couple of these Broodlords. Looks like they are going to get at least a couple of them. Nice play there. They are going to start moving very far onto Creep, though. Trying to really snipe down some of these Infestors now as well. But I don't know. Is it going to be enough? It does look like it is. And Mana takes game number one against Cyril. Really playing very well against the best player on the planet. I hope you guys did enjoy this game between Mana and Cyril. And if you guys did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, stay positive, and as always, I'll talk to you guys all in the next one. Peace.